more Philip. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Mr. Philip Holmes. Hello. Mr. Philip, tell me a little bit about yourself and if you want, what you do professionally. Um, well, um, grew up as an orphan, got adopted. Uh, that went well for about 19 years. Uh, then became homeless again. Um, went to live in the YMCA. And uh, I know, you know, around the world, especially in America, YMCA is so important. Do go and support your YMCA. They supported me into getting into nightclubs and, and being a DJ. Um, and it changed my life. And because of that, I was DJing in a club one night and uh, a guy from the local radio station, Robbie, was there. And uh, he said, you've got a great voice. I said, moi, say moi. He said, come in the local radio station. So that started my radio career. I continued doing DJing. I then spent 28 years on the radio, uh, all major markets in the UK, celebrities, and all the stuff radio gets you. I won the UK's highest radio award for my work with, and you know Robbie Williams, right, in America? Robin Williams, yes. R no, yes. not the... Not the comedian, Robbie Williams, the singer. No, because I don't listen to anybody that has the same name as me. I'm sorry. I only know one <laughs> Robbie. Uh, his name has the same name as mine. He owns my Twitter. And apparently he's a pretty good musician, but he's an awful guy. So I don't, I don't float the boats when it comes to Robbie's. Well, you know, I wrote that purposely for you. That, that failed. But anyway, Robbie Williams, take that. Um, uh, and then four years ago, my wife decided um i guess i got a bit old and got a bit boring so she uh, she walked out one night with uh, with a suitcase left me and the kids we're still great friends by the way so this is nothing awful so i was left with the children i had to give up my uh, radio career at the time i was on uh, northern england's biggest radio station for listeners and uh, reach and share things we say here so i had to work from home because I had nobody to take my uh, children to school or pick them up from school, uh, my daughter and my son. So I had to work from home. And I, Robbie, I completely missed the whole podcast thing. And I reached out to a couple of people and um, I was offered to do a podcast on tech, on Apple tech. And um, being a single dad, proud single dad, and for all your listeners that are single parents, uh, you know, it's hard work. And, um, and I thought, I don't have the time. I'd like to do a podcast about something very passionate to me. And uh, that was the paranormal. So, uh, because I had to work from home to take the kids to school and then pick them up from school. So uh, I launched my podcast. Uh, in the last four years, I've launched three other ones. Uh, Move them on. We're now back to one. We're going to launch another couple. But uh, so I went from raid DJing, homeless DJing radio to podcasting and I do it all for my children. And it's, it's well, gone. It's people, gone all right. People always bring up the fact that podcasting is just a form of like talk radio, which I honestly yeah. don't think is true. Uh, my parents both work in the radio department. I'm surprised I didn't end up going into it, but I wanted to do my own thing where I came to podcasting, but like they, they work in radio all day. My dad's sick of it. My dad doesn't like li listening to radio anymore. He's owns, he owns his own station now. He's done it for so long, like 40 something years. You know, it's the only thing I known him to do. But like, even when you're doing it, you said you had a great voice and some person approached you too. That's what makes a podcast entertainable. I know that if the first five minutes, I judge kind of the person's voice, not really what the podcast's about. I mean, I hate the sound of my own voice. Uh, even when editing, it's a pain. I'm just trying to avoid it mostly because it sounds different to me than it might sound to others. But when you're deciding, when you're doing radio, especially, you got to decide if you want to have the, you're listening to the beach and you're ready to rock with the next, uh, you got to have, you can have that <laughs> false persona. But like, I know what my parents sound like when they're not on radio. 
So when I hear them on the radio, I sit there and go, why do you use your DJ voice? And they're like, it's yeah. my, that's my normal voice. And I say, no, it's not because I know what it's like. And that's sometimes the persona they give off where if you meet somebody that's not maybe behind the scene or behind a microphone or something and they sound completely different, you're like, you're not the guy I thought you were. It's like, no, because I like to talk like a normal person as well. But I mean, it's meant for entertaining. And that's the difference I see between podcasting too. When you're going to talk into the microphone, when I first started this, much like every other podcaster that's first started, you could be, how am I going to talk? And then you could be like, my, uh, my name's uh, Cheech, bro. I like to, uh, uh, uh. And you could do like the whole like, you know, br- stupid character act or you can do, um, you know, the whole like, you're listening to KRXX podcast and we're going to talk about smooth jazz. You can do that, but I'm like <laughs> – what do I want to do? Do I want to do something that's going to make me like to listen to my own voice or am I just going to talk? Because it's going to be natural that way. If I'm having conversations with people that last longer than an hour, you know how long it's going to be to be a pain in the ass to sit there and go, you're listening to John talk about his life story. And let me tell you, John, let me, let's, let's get this quick advertisement in there real quick. It's like, hold on a second. So this is more natural feel and it, it, it to each is their own. My podcast is a conversation and you turn to something that's paranormal, but you said it hit something that means something to you. So what yeah. does the paranormal exactly mean to you? And when did this mean something to you? I think we've all had at one point an experience in our lives. Well, let me pause you, right? Because this is a conversation and, and, and I love that reply. Um, I have a rival in my genre who has that American radio voice, that Casey Kasem. And he gets reviews, I think very unfairly, um, saying, you know, I think a recent review Arrival got was when did Casey Kasem and Ryan Seacrest have a love child? And I did sort of smile and then felt guilty about it. Let me answer, let me just backtrack. Where I come from in the UK, it's um, everybody's accent, my late mum's accent, was imagine a pirate, Robbie, right? Captain Jack, you all right, my lover? All right there? I tell you what, coming up next on the radio is one of my favorite songs from Aber. Well, there's, there's people in uh, America that do the same exact thing. Um, at my <laughs> dad's radio station, there's a guy on there called DJ Batman. And he used to come out. And he, used to, <laughs> he used to sound like an OTC man. I think that's the fun part about radio, too, a little bit different. I mean, I had the choice to go into radio, but I decided not to because I didn't want to follow my parents' footsteps. I wanted to feel like I should be able to make a name for myself, whether it was right. podcasting or it was whether if it was building a fucking bridge. I don't care. Yeah. I just need it needed to be me. But, yeah. um, you know even with the names there's the dude that we have here that's his name the dude there's you know my dad's name is skip um you know everyone's got this it's a nice little flair it's nice to do a character attitude but like my best friend's family is from the uk so really Where I, I i think wales somewhere out there yeah yeah um, yeah beautiful all, all i know is his dad was like 30 years older than his mom um, his dad was like kind of like white hair, older guy, looked like my grandpa a little bit, but he would always smoke cigarettes on the couch inside the house with his legs crossed and he would watch UFC fights. And <laughs> he didn't say much. He was a very, very nice guy. Um, shout out to Tyler that your dad's awesome. Um, you know, his dad, You're awesome, man, you're awesome. His dad was very blunt in a lot of his talking. That's why I'm a, like, that's why when you were texting me and you were messaging me and I was giving it back to you, I was like, I've, I've been, this is exactly yeah. when I was at my buddy's house. This is yeah. what his dad would always do. And it was fun because they don't see it as, you know, in America, we see it as like, oh, you're being harassment or any of this stuff. So I was like, no, it's, you let it become that when you sit there and hold on to it for so long. But the difference is, yeah. is what's, it's not about what makes us different. It's about the things that we have that are in common, but we just take in different ways. So like with radio, I mean, it's interesting too. Like when I, when I come across a podcast or if I come across a channel, if I'm listening to talk radio on my phone, on an app, I'll look over to another country and listen to theirs. And it's interesting to see the, the things that we consider maybe different over here you know, over there is completely normal. And I think that's amazing too, because you need to have that variety out there. I know there's even in, if you look at your radio in your car, you got 
see the stations down here. We got 93.5, which is like an all cold, like a hardcore rock uh, station. You got two guys that just sit there, call deadbeat dads on the phone um, and ask them like, you just want a contest. They're like, I want a contest. What do you mean? I want a contest. So like <laughs> you, you get, you're going to have $50,000, man. We're going to send you a check for $50,000, man. They have their name and everything. And they're like, congratulations. Where should we mail the address to, or should we mail it to your, um, your baby mama's house because you're obviously not paying the child support. And the guy's like, what? And then like <laughs> they catch you in that whole thing. That's their kind of like dickish attitude type of justice type way. They got their own characters. And then there's like 99.9, which is like a country station. Um, you know, those guys are like, you're listening. You know what? I really love a good, a good barbecue. And that's them. <laughs> and then what's interesting is my dad has worked for every station that I can flip through in my town on the radio. He's worked for them all and he's managed them all. So when I'm listening to them all, I remember my dad's always kept the same tone in his voice. That kind of sounds like his, but he's like, you're listening to 98 one and we're going to be playing the next up the best of rock. Hope you guys, hope you all enjoy out there. And then he would just play it and then just go. And it's quick, simple. And that's why people say he's good at what he does. And I think that's needed because there's some talk radio stations you're sitting there and listening and, and you're like just like how i'm kind of ranting right now it's like get to the fucking point because yeah. it does sit there and you're like all right man i get it i get it let's not talk for seven hours on this thing let's move on to the next one do you know again you for me um uh, and of course you interview so many people um you know uh, conversation. conversation yeah Oh, conversation, yeah. You Interview know, makes uh, me sound like a whore. I don't like that. And I, and, and <laughs> you, you've you've made too many points for me, uh, and we'll forget them all. Even though I'm making notes, you know, I I always start my show when I interview Americans, saying, "Tell me your story," and I just let them talk. And and that hasn't gone down in the past over the last four years so well with Americans because I think a lot of Americans, certainly my listeners, uh, are waiting for me to jump back in every three seconds. Yeah, it's it's a problem because, I mean, we're used to the back and forth tangent. I like to make it like a conversation, so hop in, obviously, when you want to talk. And then it's like, but, you know, be respectful, too. But even yeah. when, like, if you're interviewing people about paranormal, right? So you're talking right. a little bit. Okay. You're going to find that with if you're interviewing anybody from America, it's going to be a little bit different from interviewing somebody from the UK, mostly because everyone in America is a little bit like put off by some like, why are you getting me on a podcast? That's why when I invited you on, I was so surprised that in like in the first, uh, you know, like not even like our first couple of minutes, you responded back. That would be amazing, man. I would love to do it. I was like, you're obviously not from America because more people from America <laughs> are going to give the response back as why do you want me on your podcast? What is it about? What are you trying to prove? Are you against me? And it's like all this hate stuff. And I'm like, this is why I'm, I'm going to correct you. Um, I said it would be an honor. Yeah. And that's what I really, really enjoy because people from the UK don't have that type of mentality of we're here to pick on somebody in America. It's been influenced way too much to the point where we're like, somebody's going to attack us. If we, if they get invited to a podcast, I get it every day. I'm asking hundreds of people to be on this thing. And two thirds of the time, it's just someone like, what, what do you mean? They're too lazy to look it up. They're too lazy to click on the profile. They're too lazy. To, they always want topics. They always want something to know what they're going to talk about. I'm like, it's conversation. Let's bring that shit back because it's not normal here anymore. And in somewhere like the UK, Scotland, any other country except China or something with a heavily dense population, it's, it's, it's just not there. I mean, it's, it's there in UK, but it's not here. It's not, we lost that mentality of I'm going to let someone just, strike up a conversation and let's see where it goes you know what what kills me robbie is um you know even before i was your age um you know i i sounded like that you're right there here we are now let, let's play the beatles so i love the beatles and that's how radio sounded here and uh, we were getting an influx of australian tv shows here in america uh, here in the uk um so I used to sit down like an impressionist going on America's Got Talent. I used to, and of course, you know, I'm old enough to be your great, 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 great grandfather. Um, there was no internet. There was no, God bless you, son. There was <laughs> no, there was no internet radio. And 
you won't know about this, I guess. That sounds patronizing. Don't mean it to be. Your dad will do. Some of your listeners will do. There was an American publication called Radio and Records, or I guess you call it Records. And it was for the radio industry. And I went to my local shop store and uh, I subscribed. And I used to apply for every radio job in America advertised. Small stations, Kiss, Los Angeles. And I realized if I wanted to go to America, I ain't going to sound like this. So I spent two years, like an impressionist does, trying to get on, you know, with, uh, with one of the late night chat shows. And I would listen to the Australian, I even say it, Australian. That's now not how English people say it. We would say Australian. I say Australian. I changed my accent to move to America. So it sounded neutral, not American, not Australian, but I didn't sound like that, my lover. I like your cap you're wearing today. But to get into America in the 90s was impossible. To get a green card, it was absolutely impossible. And I find this, answering some of the points you've made, that now my show is 96% American audience. Yeah, it's easy to tell because um, what you look at is what podcast type genre of yours and where does it, cor cor I guess, correlate with where it's popular in the world. Let me tell you the top five podcasts, depending on where your country is. If you're from Australia, you're fascinated with two very, very good topics. One is storytelling. There are they love storytelling in Australia. They want to hear your thoughts. They want to hear, that's why my podcast does amazing in Australia because it's just storytelling. It's conversation. They wow. like also interview type style things as well. UK yeah. is more about, a lot of the people in the UK do paranormal podcasts, do spooky podcasts, do talk about ghost stuff because there's a lot of ghost stuff there to talk about. There's a lot of uh, spooky kind of scary stuff and that's popular to people in America. America loves true crime. They love spooky. They love paranormal. They love cryptids. They like everything that's kind of fantasy. They like politics. They like all these types of things because it's just about, it, it depends too. It also goes with the person's voice. Your voice to me is very, very entertaining. It's very something I can listen to. It's because of the accent. Um, if you were Irish and you were a girl, I guarantee you, I would be texting you every single day and bothering the shit out of you because <laughs> <laughs> to me, they have one of the best accents I've ever heard. I love of. you, Ravi. I, I freaking worked with an Irish girl. Let me tell you something. I never wanted to drop my pants faster than anything in the world. I looked at her. I was like, yeah. you just want to get married? Dude, she, yeah. redhead. I mean, I'm not into redheads that much, but dude, a little light redhead. Freaking There's a harp playing in the background. Oh, I'm with you, man. Man, I'll never forget Kevin, this Irish guy I worked with. He's like, dude, stop hitting on me, fucking sister. I'm like, I, dude. <laughs> It's the accent, man. It's a panty dropper. He's like, what, what are you talking about wearing panties? You're a dude. I'm like, don't judge me. If you hit, if you hit on my sister again, I'll take you around the back and yeah, I'll make he, you a man. He, he was, he's a good dude. He rolled me up. See, that's different too. And culture wise, they, he rolls his own cigarettes. I always remember I worked doing jet skis. He would always sit on the back of a jet ski and roll up his own cigarettes. I'm like, you roll your own wine, just go buy a pack from the store. He's like, oh, yeah. they, taste, they taste like shit. This is home. This is from home. And he'd sprinkle it this on This is thing. true. This yeah. is true. Because when you buy here, uh, rolling tobacco, it's moist. It's wet. When you feel it, it's just wet. And it, when you, oh, don't get me started. Yeah, you, 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 you buy You a sound like me when I met that Irish girl. Yeah. <laughs> It, I love the moistness. Yeah. Oh, that, it's so moist. There are people right now that are listening that are just <laughs> started getting uncomfortable because of the word moist. They they've dropped their mac and cheese. Yeah, I like the moist. No, it's true. The rolling tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you buy it here, is is moist. And but I can't do it right because you can buy machines here. But for me, it's that whole thing of of you you you, you, you get the paper, you get the rolling tobacco. And then and then and then you you lick it or you spit on it and you and I think no by this time I would have smoked my cigarette, well, or as like, I call it a fag. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at like you know that's something that'd be different here if you said that, but like if we look at where people are from and stuff, like the one thing I took to hold to importance, especially when I was if I ever podcasted with someone from a different country or if I met somebody from a different country, was learn as much as I possibly can about them. 
learn as much as I possibly can about the culture, learn a little bit different because I might not ever get the time to be able to travel over there. And I think that's what everybody needs. I mean, I worked uh, at a hotel, obviously, um, or not obviously, but, um, you know, for a good while, uh, we'd get students from Russia, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Serbia, and I would make them feel as comfortable as possible. I would tell, ask me, like, give me your real name, because they would give you one that would be Americanized. Like, if their name was Christo, they'd be called Chris. And I'm like, no, 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 you're not a fucking animal. I don't want to give you a nickname. I want to know your real name to treat you with respect the same way I would like to be treated. And getting yeah. to know them more, I always did this thing. Here's a piece of paper. I numbered it one to 10. I gave it out to like 50 different kids there. And I said, at the end of the day, I'm going to ask for this paper back. I want you to write 10 English words and then 10, their transcription into um, your, your language. So I was getting Russia, Romania, Bulgaria. So I'd be like, Chefach, when I would say hello to somebody, I would speak in their tongue. I would call them on the radio in their language when people were trying to get a hold of them. Like, Chris, Chris, he's like, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean because they don't know what you're saying. So I would call them up on the radio and I'd speak their language and then I would, you know, they would go and do it. And I'm like, you just got to learn it. Meet them half way they're coming all the way from their home in an uncomfortable environment here a new place for them spending maybe all their paycheck money just to survive be able to eat and be able to have fun but there's living like 20 to a house they're not very comfortable you know they have to shower at places not at their own pad and it's like just meet them okay just meet them with that little bit and i think that's some important stuff too but even if we go on to like what are the podcasting differences like what's popular and where paranormal is popular here because we have paranormal shows but if you look at all these paranormal shows it's all like uk ghost hunter it's all things from another country that are like they might not be taking place in another country but they're on the tv and they're here but the guys that are running are probably from the uk there are some america people but it's just interesting. It's something soothing too. It's why every single nature documentary we have is some dude from another country. Like, look at the cheetah as it's approaching its target destination. And at this target's destination, it's going to eat this raccoon. And you're like, that's just fucking appetizing Very good. to me. That's Very good. good. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to argue with it because, um, you know, I, I, I've created enemies because um, I don't agree uh, in the genre of paranormal. Um, they are all American. And um, over the last couple of years, I've dealt with um, UK, certainly English, uh, paranormal podcasts that, you know, start with some bravado and we're going to do this. And um, a lot of them steal my ideas. I, I, I used to have this thing with my best friend where I'd say, you know, people are nicking my ideas. And he'd go, no, no, they're not. And I went, right, what are we going to do? Let's change the logo. My show in four years has had like 25 logos. And I go, right, what are we going to do? And he went, put a skull on your logo. And I went, okay, here's a skull, commercial free. And then he'd phone me up, Robbie, and he'd go, oh, you know that other show? These are British shows, by the way, not American shows. Oh, they've got a logo now. And I went, let's have some fun with this. Um... What are we going to do now? I said, let's do colour. Let's put some red in for blood and paranormal. And then another show would do that. And I think last year I spoke with about six British paranormal podcasts. And I said, listen, you're not doing it. The audience is America. I've seen that Americans are supporting Americans, not, not American uh, paranormal podcasts. Actually, I think that's rather gorgeous because it, it, it show, it, it's the whole patriotism thing. Those six shows now have gone. Um, somebody left me a review the other day and they went, stop asking for Patreon support. I, I support free UK paranormal podcasts. Are you, so you, are you saying that uh, most of the paranormal stuff's in America or UK? America, yeah. I in my think, genre. I think you might be talking about true crime mixed with paranormal. Um, I don't, I know there's a lot more in the UK that are based on paranormal. I've actually talked to three so far this week, not even this week, the past two days has been three paranormal UK podcasts. But like in America, the only time we ever really do paranormal, if it's not one by itself, it's 
one that's true crime mixed with a oh and then there was apparently his ghost that walked around and that's just because we're so infatuated in the states with true crime everything is true crime this true crime that true crime this true crime that it's like if you just put true crime in your instagram page you're immediately getting like a thousand follows that's All right, what uh, people want to see you- you correct me. I, mean, I, I was meaning, you know, uh, podcasts in my genre that actually have some listeners. I mean, um, I, I'm. Listen, I saw the other day there was somebody on. I'm British. I don't care. That freaking that was the sl- that was the low key freaking uh, punch to the anybody no, else's it, throat. That was that was good. I I hey I clap you for that. That was solid. Like, that was a solid no. Listen, it, 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 Robbie, it shouldn't be right. I saw you know you and I met on Instagram and uh, you know and grinder, but that's another story. We'll move on from that. But we met on Instagram, that's right? Story. That was a great story. And uh, next time on the photos, just not so blurred. Not so blur- pixelated, don't turn me on. But listen, uh, hey, my kids would hate me for that. I hope they don't hear this. I have a oh, six pack. I don't need to be pixelating anything. If I can. Your six pack is in the fridge, cooling down for later on, let me tell you. I no, wish. there was somebody, there was a paranormal podcast on Instagram that followed me, and it's a British one. Might be somebody you've spoken to. And of course, I've seen now in my genre that now the, the big key players in my genre. And there's about five or six of us, right, in America. Um, and then the world and his dog now thinks, well, I listen, to, I listen to a podcast. I can do it myself. Oh, I can buy a microphone off Amazon for $20. I'll do it American way. And, well, that's it. So I saw somebody on Instagram uh, about, oh, I don't know, three weeks ago. And they have all the posh logos. And they shared that they had done 17 episodes and they just hit 3,000 listeners. Welcome to the land of people buying followers. Congratulations. You found them. And let me tell you something. It's pretty sad. I've no, came no, across, no, no. Hold, hold on, on, hold on. Hold on. Um, this is a problem I like to talk about because you look at somebody's profile and you think, holy crap, they must have been podcasting for years. No, they paid somebody to give them a shout out. They paid somebody to get, it's like, why do you have 10,000 followers, but you only have five or six likes on one of your photos? Each one of your yeah. posts only has five or six <laughs> likes. It starts to be like, oh, you did advertising. They created bots accounts. And I remember this, it's a common thing nowadays for people to do the little secret way to get followers, which isn't so damn secret anymore. And it's actually kind of weird. Um, like I've talked to people uh, and then I immediately look on their profile. I'm like, why are a lot of my followers on theirs? And I'm like, yeah. well, what do you look? And they like, <laughs> they go and they follow every single one of Everybody. your followers yeah. and they yeah. keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And then when you finally like them back or something, they just remove themselves from you so they can get their follower count down. No, listen, I, I was talking, shut your face. I was talking, <laughs> no, I was talking listeners, not followers, not social media, right? Yeah. This, the, this podcast on Instagram posted they'd done 17 episodes podcast episodes and they had you know 3,000 downloads of their podcast not social media and I thought and and I hope people listening are trying to do the maths on this because you go 17 episodes 3,000 downloads now that, that's not 3,000 listens that's 3,000 downloads over 17 episodes. So either they're lying or they do what a lot of people do, and they go onto everybody's computer, going into the library, going on each computer and hitting download, 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 and just going down the line. That could be a possibility. There's people in the America states. No, I've do done that. 17 po- well, there's people in the America states that try and All do right. that too. They go in onto different computers and go to people's houses. Like, let me see your phone. I'm just going to subscribe to my YouTube channel real quick. I'm like, you dirty. You're dirty. No, they, we were talking about British podcasts and, and they'd done 17 episodes and had 3,000 downloads. That doesn't mean 3,000 listeners. That means... I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on the download thing. I'm just saying uh, there's a... Over. The, well, there's a over. guy... Hold on. There's over. A, Philip, over. Philip. <laughs> Philip. There's a guy on Insta. There's a guy on YouTube. What he does yeah. is he goes to the beach and he goes, "Can I call my mom real quick?" And the guys are like, "Uh," or he'll be like, "Can I call my girlfriend real quick?" And they're like, "Sure." So then he'll grab the phone, 
or like, can I text them or something? Then he'll send a text to a phone and the phone will, will send a YouTube channel link. He'll click on the YouTube channel link and then it'll be his YouTube channel and he'll click subscribe and then he'll undo it, delete it. And then he'll give the phone back. Thank you. And then the number's not there. So you, they can't trace and see what you did, but eventually they're going to see notifications on it, whatever that they, they subscribe to a YouTube channel. They didn't subscribe to, but that's how people boost them up. That could be the same thing that happened in that case over there where they got the 3000 balance, or they could just be bullshitting. Like most people like to do. It's like, when you say you've banged five girls, you've probably only banged two. And her mum. No, listen, what I'm saying is, Hey, I'm 48. All right, you're 22. You don't get it. Um, I know what, sa- what I'm saying is over 17 episodes, 3,000 downloads is appalling. And I wouldn't show off about it. Um, but I'm a nice guy and I've done this and they were British and I sent them a private message on Instagram and I said, can you confirm what you're saying? Um, you've done 17 episodes and you've had 3,000 listens not listeners unique listeners 3000 so we're taking 17 episodes and we're dividing it by three and and they went yeah and i said listen there's not many british paranormal podcasts out there um they all collapse because you know they all try and start up then they work out the audience is america now for me my life is america me and my son would move to america tomorrow but british people are struggling with that and i said listen let me help you I want to put you on my show, like you're doing with me today. Put, I'll put you on my show. I want to help build you. And she replied and went, no, you can F off. And it wasn't F off. And I replied and I went, I'm just trying to be helpful here and nice. When I had done 17 episodes of my paranormal show from the UK, I think we'd gone over 1 million downloads. You've had 3,000, and I'm saying to you, I'd like to help. Um, this isn't the, the podcast you have now, right? This is a different one? No, it's one I have now. How do you have millions of downloads if you only have 1,000 followers on Instagram? Why are you basing this on, on Instagram? Because that's Our where Instagram a lot of content comes from. If you actually listen to a podcast and download it, you usually go and find the Instagram page to follow it. It's how people can stay in touch with you. Yeah, but our, our Instagram account, I think, is about a month old. Mm. I'd still find you if I was listening. No, but I don't find that. And, and I have this, uh, when I talk with other friends of mine that do American Paranormal podcasts, they, they have this almost a current rate of downloads. I find, and when I deal with audio... Uh, advertising companies every day i've always found with mine that it depends on my subject whether it be uh, ghosts whether it be ufos whether it be cryptids bigfoot that sort of thing i'd love the podcast about that stuff that's why when i get someone like you on here i usually like it when that topic goes that way so i can sit there and talk about it because the way i've structured my show is conversations with people that's fun I like yeah. to do that, but someone that yeah. makes knit hats or someone that does woodworking or someone that does a PhD in molecular neuroscience is not going to want to talk about cryptids, Bigfoot, all these types of things. So I usually get stuck to that topic, which is fine. I can pull it out of it if I want to. And I yeah. can easily, which I've been thinking about doing is um, doing this a little bit more of a comedy flow like I like to have. I mean, I still like to have fun with my guests like you, obviously, but I do want to sometimes have just friends on here and shoot the shit about like why the hell is toilet paper so popular right now during a pandemic? You know that I like to have those jokes. I like to throw in humor because it makes a more entertaining episode. This is just like, you're hearing my conversation through my eyes. So you're basically a fly on the wall. And surprisingly, a lot of the downloads depend on how connected, honestly, that person is with their friends and family because they share it with their friends and family. Then their friends or family are spreading it everywhere. Like, dude, this guy just on this podcast. It's awesome. This this dude's awesome. I like seeing the feedback from all my guests, mostly when they send me a message, like my family loved it. My family thought it was entertaining. I'm like, good. I want that because I, it's not about being number one. I don't care about being number one. I don't care about number thousand. I don't care what 
I care about is the fact that we can get to a point where people can just start talking and figuring out shit and learning, just having a conversation. I come into this podcast knowing nothing about you, knowing no prior really speak before this besides setting up a time because it's a fucking mystery. That's what life used to be is a mystery. It's why mystery stuff is so popular. It's like you lost it from your everyday life. Just add that shit back in there. Walk up to a stranger, be like, why are you wearing that trench coat, man? He's like, I got some shotguns under here. You're like, oh, thank you for warning me. I'm going to back away out of the Starbucks before you light it up. You know, it's, it's that type of thing. We like mystery and I think it's needed. And that's what I enjoy every time. It's like, I get a guest like you on. It's a surprise. I never know where it's going to go. You could sit here well, you and say, find me your fairy Jerry. You, you say mystery. And, and just to conclude on the last story, because that is a mystery story where I reached out privately just to help somebody out. Um, I've never, uh, we're, we're about to launch episode 100 today. And I have never let more than seven episodes in my feed where people download you and whatever. I, and, and, and I don't know about other genres, Robbie, but certainly in the paranormal, there's some of us that do that. Uh, the biggest, uh, American paranormal podcaster, probably the biggest in the world, um, never releases more than 10. And it's a way to hopefully push people to Patreon or something else. I've never launched more than seven. And so you can never download more than seven of my episodes. And uh, episode 100 goes out today. It's a wonderful story about Bigfoot in Texas. And we will, by the end of next week, hit 3 million unique downloads. And they're figures from Libsyn, a company I know you would know. I know if I'd had all of my 99 episodes available, well, I've never let more than seven out. You'd if we had way all... more downloads, if you had more content for more people Absolutely. to access. We, we I'm not easy... paying for a podcast. I would never pay for a podcast. Even my favorite ones. I'm like, fuck that. I just do it for free. I don't ever want to charge for this thing. If I run a free advertisement on my thing, that's like, you have to listen to 20 seconds before my episode begins. That's fine. But it's like, this isn't an ending career for me. This isn't, it'd be cool if it turned into something, but I don't plan on it too. I just like fucking doing it. It's cool to meet people like you and get to figure out like your story a little bit and have a conversation with you. I, if I would have never started this thing, I would be so much dumber than how dumb I am right now. Only because I've talked to so many people, the information I've gathered from hearing, basically seeing the world through other people's eyes, hearing some tales that'll pull you to heartstrings, seeing, you know, just having conversations with people where you're just fucking afterwards, you feel energized, you know, you're just pumped and ready for the day. I think that's just what's needed in the world. I mean, if it's not like how it is in UK and America here, people don't talk to each other that much anymore. We don't break ever out of our comfort zones. We prefer to be on our own little autopilot scenario and do all these mindless robot activities. It's not fun. I enjoy my alone time. I don't talk to people outside of my podcast, but I'm like, it's because every time I get into an interaction with someone in a store, they just look at you and go, oh, and just like flick the hair back. I'm like, the f what? What are you doing to me? I'm just trying to buy a fucking Milky Way bar. Like, that's all I want. Why are you giving me such conflict over a damn Snickers? You know, it's, it's, it's difficult. And I don't like that. That's why when I listen to a podcast like yours, or if I listen to any other paranormal true crime, and I hear these people that look up all this research and into this specific topic and come with a lot of structured points and a flow of the show, I'm like, I like that. But I would never be able to do it because I've tried. I've tried many times. I had a uh, you know famous comedian on recently too, and I have some more coming on. And I was writing down stuff to ask, and then I was just like, "Fuck this!" and threw the book. Like it, I can't. I, I just couldn't do it because sitting there and trying to figure out ways to gateway into it, I'm like, I'm gonna seem too tight, too loose, or you know, like too structured. I need to be loose and need to be flowing. So. I just prefer improv. I think best on my toes. If you shot a question out at me right now, like, have you ever encountered a ghost? I would immediately be like, yes, 2004, bam. And I'd go right into the story of when I did actually first think encounter a ghost. You know, that's stuff that's interesting, especially when I go on another podcast, people are like, you didn't study. I'm like, I'm best when I don't study. And then afterwards, like, dude, you were my best episode download. I was like, because if you put me to study, I will mess everything up. I'll start Googling things in China that has nothing to do with paranormal shit. But, you know, again, Robert, you make a wonderful point that <clears throat> when I started um, 
the main podcast, I've launched four over the last four years. Uh, one went to 63 in the whole of American iTunes. Uh, I'm not going to plug it. Not what this is about. Plug it, but plug, I, it plug it, plug it. Uh, well, we're bringing it back. It, it, was, uh, it was a true crime show. Um, you know, I spent a couple of months um, listening to the competition, hearing what they were doing, uh, thinking how I can make it different. Um, and uh, I launched it last year. It was made noteworthy by Apple. Uh, I think after a month two, um, and um, I'd, I'd done some stories, something trending, you know, and it went to 63 uh, in America. I think for about four and a half seconds, and then it was gone again. <laughs> but like, I'll keep that. <laughs> you're, like the, you're like the movies that sit there and say, number one, best movie of the year. And it just keeps doing intros. It's like, can I have the title? I just want to know what the name is. What's yeah. the name of it, Philip? What's the name? Uh, it's called, uh, well, it relaunches this week. It's called Worst Crimes Ever. Robbie, I'm very simple. So uh, my like crime that. show. I think that's my... what it needs to be. I would like to look at a show. Thank you very like, much. What the hell is Doe So Tripla? I don't know what type of podcast that is. What's it about? And it's like you start reading. It's like, we're talking about the economical stasis of the world. It's like, the f why isn't it just called the economical stasis of the world? Can I? Like um... times easier. Can I? I haven't mentioned it yet. Am I allowed to mention the name of my main show? Yeah, do it, dude. Plug yourself. Well, I want to ask your permission first. It's your show. Well, I appreciate uh, it, but I'm pro people, so I'm like, toss that sucker in. I there. know let's, that man. Let's get you out. It's, there. Uh, so the main show is called Scared with a question mark, um, and 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 it was just about um, people, you know, not the attention freaks, the people that have had one, maybe just one thing happen in their life something they've seen, smelt, thought about, you know, hairs on the back of their neck went up, and for them to share, maybe anonymously, rather than those people that, you know, in the paranormal genre have seen a ghost, and they went in their backyard, and then there was Bigfoot being abducted by aliens, shagging the Loch Ness Monster. We, there's those sort of people. So it was about sharing stories. Um, and Worst Crimes Ever... Uh, was the same and uh, I did very well with that but then some my mum died and I didn't have the time as a single dad of two to then carry on with two shows uh so it comes back this week thank you very much for the plug so yeah it's hold, on, hold on real quick I'm just gonna write down the time code I want to make sure I can cut all that out when we actually I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding oh you are, <laughs> you are. no so so it starts off with me just um looking at the worldwide uh, shocking crime news uh, but again, not for those people that maybe follow true crime. We, we did a story last year, you know, uh, uh, about somebody who, who uh, had bathed their baby and um, the baby was still wet and they were too busy. So they put the baby in the microwave and that was the name of the show. Baby in a microwave. They put the baby in the microwave to dry. And then I go into um, like fifteen seconds or ten seconds or so. Or well, I think the baby was bubbling. Oh, so, some person I went to school with threw a cat in a microwave, and the cat died. And it's when I hear that, I immediately think like, "Damn, like that's some sick shit." To throw something in the microwave. I, me throwing a hot pocket in the microwave is one thing, but tossing a baby in there, it's like, "Holy crap!" You know, Robbie, it's it, it's um, you know, I, I I've had a few paranormal experiences in my life and but i, I want some of these bad boys i want to hear it now you brought it up i've already got goosebumps on the back of my neck well I'll, 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 give me one uh, uh ghosts cryptid bigfooty monsters or ufos which one do you want all right i'm gonna have to pick more than one but i want to hear a cryptid one first please for the love of god tell me it's bigfoot or you met the um pope licking monster hopefully the, the Pope licking monster. Yeah, there's a monster that's just like the Jersey Devil, but it's in Pennsylvania. It's called the Pope licking monster. He's the only one with a death count. Um, it's because of his lair. It is located on a mile and a half track of railroad that is on a bridge. So people would walk this bridge and a train would come and they would have no way to get off. So um, there was a couple that jumped off and one dude was hanging by his arm and um, his girlfriend plummeted to her death. And the guy got one of his arms ripped off. Um, so it's, it's, an, it's an intense, but that's the reason why they call it the Pope Licking Monster. Because when you're walking above the bridge tracks, 
where its lair is, it's like right under the bridge, like kind of suspended over this thing. And you can hear the growls and the sounds and apparently all this stuff. And it's just a place for dumb people to do dumb stuff. You Americans, depending, uh, I guess, which state you're in, and, and you're on the coast where you are, but, you know, it, it's forests and, and camping and pickups. And it, it, it's the life I want. I would move tomorrow with my son to somewhere like Montana. And I know you're a mountain guy as well. I'm a, I'm a beach guy. Sadly, I live in a beach town, but I am a mountain at heart. I like to camp. I'm a love, I love, love for camping. Well, I just said that, and, and, and you just said you're a beach guy, but actually you're a mountain guy. You're an all-rounder. If I open I, up this window back here where the glare is, you will see a straight-up ocean. Yeah, I'm 500 meters from the beach myself, but I know, like me, you would love a cabin somewhere, oh, yeah. and, you, and you would like to live in the middle of nowhere where nobody could bother you. Freaking wood toilet seat, dude. Are you kidding me? That would be the dream. That's what I call shitting in class, my friend. Shitting in class. And, and I think what I just said actually were not a direct quote, but your words as well from one of your previous episodes. I've said at the log cabin for sure. I like to look at, like, do you see the bottle of the maple syrup with the log cabin on it and the snow? Yeah. I like that idea. That would be my perfect home. Yeah, and, and, and a lake nearby, which is the, the water is so blue, it could be in the Caribbean. And just learning to fish, having a little boat, and being off the grid. Yeah, I like it. And that's what. And again, that goes back to what we were saying earlier on. That was that was my dream when I was your age. And um, oh, and my wife sends the best. My new girlfriend, by the way, sends the best. She's um, she's deflating now, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I was hoping you were to catch that dinghy <laughs> reference I threw in there. For people, of course. For people that are listening, we had a we had a brief little uh, interaction that was a, a little bit of jokes at each other, and this, these were some of the jokes inside jokes that you guys are not going to know about. But continue on, my friend Philip, to the paranormal. No, and 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 uh, by the way, she sends her best. She's very well. She's well, actually, she's not very well, Robbie. She's feeling a bit ill, but I, I've got a you know some aspirin and a puncture repair kit for her, so uh, I, I will pass on your best wishes. <laughs> no, um, you know, I grew up camping. Camping is my, my baby here. You've got to remember, of course, you know, the whole United Kingdom is, is probably the size of New York State. But I remember when I was just slightly younger than you, and I, I grew up in an area... And again, imagine, you know, Vermont or uh, Washington State, it, it, obviously a lot smaller, but it was just woods. And um, imagine that photo, you know, if you Google spooky or that sort of thing, a lot of podcasts sort of use this. I used it when I started my show, Scared, um, where, where you have just a road, a single straight road and either side are trees. And it just goes on for miles. And I know for a lot of your listeners, they'll think that's my backyard, but it's a bit unusual here. So just a road that just goes on and on and on and just nothing but trees either side. And you know that, that there's no property, there's no farms, that there's no houses for five, 10 miles. And because of my love of, of America, when I was 18, 19, I got myself a CB radio. Do you remember those yeah. CB radio? I have yeah. one in my truck. There you go. Again, it, it's not a big thing here in the UK. So I, I had a car um, called a Citroen 2CV. Do you know what that is? I don't know, such in two BC, whatever you said was. Yeah, it wasn't a big thing in America. Um, I think it appears in uh, Robin Williams' Good Morning Vietnam, but it's a French car. Uh, the, the Citroen version of the VW Beetle, very cheap public car. The thing with, the, uh, with that car was you couldn't lock the doors on the inside. You literally had to open the window and the windows didn't roll down. It was like a window in two parts and you'd flip one up. And to lock the car, if you were inside, you had to put your hand out the window and use the key and lock it. So I'd driven 
And again, remembering the UK, England is a lot smaller than most American states. But I'd driven about 20 miles down these roads to meet someone who sold me this CB radio. And I got the CB radio, thank you very much, gave him the money, kissed his girlfriend, smacked his mum's ass, got back in my car, and I'm, God bless you, man, and I'm driving home. I'm driving home. And again, it's like doing actually my show because for anybody listening, even in Australia where, you know, they don't have a lot of trees, this is something different. In America, most people are thinking, that's out of the back of my yard. So I got on this road. I, I, I don't even know what accent that, that was. That was like a Boston accent. Like, hey, let me give you that pastrami on Roy. Let me get that pastrami. Pastrami. Hey, cheers. So I'm driving down this road. And it's just woods on either side. And it's this, this cheap as chips car with crap headlights. And because the car was French and I was 18, in, in France at the time, all cars had yellow headlamps. So I painted mine yellow to look a bit more French. And I did it with some of my mum's nail varnish which basically meant the headlamps didn't work very well. I, I, I could have put two torches out the front and it would work better. And I'm driving down this road and I know there's no houses, no property for miles. And again, that's different in the UK. And I'm driving down, having a cigarette out the window. And I drive past something. Something in the tree line, not stood by the road, but literally at the, you know, where the trees end and the road starts, in the middle of nowhere, ten, five, ten miles from the nearest house. There was something. that The thing that you just catch out the corner of your eye, and then you look back, but then your brain kicks in and goes, don't look back. And I'm not very bright, so I look back. And I could see in the rear view mirror, wasn't that clean, you know, I was 18, I was squeezing spots into it. I could see something, it was, it was a human or a humanoid sort of shape. And not being that bright, I pulled the car over, even at 18 into the paranormal. And I had um, the car, you know the way cars have reversing lamps and they're, they're white? Uh, my car didn't come with one, so I'd fitted one. And I switched it on. I didn't have to go in reverse, switched it on, and it was like a spotlight. And there was something. Now, here in the UK, we're not into hunting. I don't, I don't think actually hunting's probably illegal, actually, as, as you have in America. Um, so, so in America, you might think it was a poacher, it was a hunter. We don't have that here. And it was that moment, Robbie, where even at 18, I thought, hold on a minute. Where, where you can always, like, like, like a sand timer when you're cooking and you see it dropping down as you cook an egg. I could almost, it was weird, man. I could almost feel it in my brain where I thought, hold on a minute. We're in the middle of nowhere. There's no houses for 10 miles. I've been driving for five miles. There's been no cars, nowhere to park a car. There's no lights. I'm in a car with the headlamps, basically don't work. I can't even lock the doors. And I could see in my back reversing light, a white light, but it was more like a spotlight. Again, uh, we say a humanoid figure. I couldn't see colour. I couldn't see anything else because it was so far back. And I sat there and I thought... These dramatic pauses are fucking killing me. You got you to gotta, you gotta get me here, man. I'm already thinking Bigfoot. I'm already thinking werewolf. I'm already thinking death, death from, uh, I don't know, a ghost of a bear. I have no clue. You, you've given me humanoid figure. And I'm like, all right. And I'm already thinking about your car. Like, you didn't have 
brake lights? You didn't have backup lights? Like, Jesus. Safety but first. The, but, man, the, the pause for the reason that, that you would do the same. There are those people that would just pull over and go, well, that's Bigfoot. Get the gun out of the trunk. I'm in the UK in this crappy old car with no lights. Haven't seen I wouldn't it. have even pulled over. I would be hauling ass down the road or into a tree or something like it's life is done. I've seen how every movie ends. The guy always dies. It's just a long run. Just kill me now. The, the thing about the car I had, it, it, I think the maximum speed was 50 miles an hour, which of course works on your highways, but I think it was naught to 60 miles per hour in about three and a half weeks. By the time I got to 60 miles an hour, I'd grown a beard and had two children. <laughs> you and, had children in three weeks? <laughs> holy shit. Good for you, man. Good man, that, you. that Red Bull. Um So that was the moment. After having other experiences, that was the moment where I'm driving, mm. my hands are locked to that steering wheel. And I thought, and, and you have to process it. And you think, hold on a minute, we don't hunt here. In America, you just think, oh, it's a guy out hunting. We don't hunt here. There's nobody about. It's not somebody taking the dog for a walk. And I saw something in the corner of my eye, but then I, yeah, I'm a bit of a numb nuts. I pulled over, put the light on, and that it was something. It was something. So here we are now, 30 years later, and when people come to me, especially from Washington State, the new, the new episode out today is actually about uh, similar sightings in Texas. That's not some shameless plug, but it's, it's true. My show is, is about things like that. And, and I, two years ago, I, w I was picking my son up from school and I, I was talking to um, a member of staff at his school. And she said, uh, oh, Phil, you're not on the radio anymore, are you? And I said, no. What happened? And I said, well, you know, I had to leave to pick the kids up. You know, there's nobody else to pick the kids up. And she said, well, what are you doing now? And I said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing a thing called a podcast. A lot of English people don't know what they are. And, um, and it's about the paranormal. And she said, oh, I don't believe in that. And I said, well, you have a story. You know, somebody that was involved teaching my son. And, I, and she said, no, I don't. And I said, you do. No, I don't. I said, you do. I said, everybody has a story. I know here in the UK, we're not really into the paranormal. It's never been a thing on TV. But everyone has a story and we're too embarrassed to share them. She said, listen, I don't have a story. And I said, I'll just stand her in the playground. What's your story? She went, well, actually. And I went, come on. That's what I get all the time. She said, um, you know our dog, Sarah? And I said, yeah. Rough Collie, and I'm a Collie guy, Border Collie guy. It's a weird um, name for a dog, Sarah. I know. No, it's a British way, actually, I think. Um, name them a normal name? You want to name them something yeah. ridiculous, like Flutter Muffin the Fifth or Sprinkle Tits the Second. Like, that's a good one. Um, I like yeah. that one. That was a good one. Sprinkle Tits the Second. Let me write that one down. Holy crap. I, I can't wait to sh share that in baltimore high street but uh no i had uh, when i lived on my own i had because of my love of, of america uh, i had two border collies called disney and dallas um and um we now have uh, actually luna luna stop it she's chewing through my network lead yeah it's actually pretty uh, funny for people that are going to watch the youtube they got to see your dog at one brief minute you were getting really serious and your dog had a toy in his mouth and slammed his head on the couch and the toy flipped out so that's going to be funny to watch yeah, yeah. Actually, bear with me on the story. Come in. Come in. Come in. Oh. And here she is. And this is, uh, she is a uh, border collie, bearded collie cross uh, that we rescued from a farm. And she's called Lunatic. I had a dog like that when I was a little kid. Died a couple of years ago. Sorry to hear that. 
Yeah, it's, it's you know it's weird too when they leave. It's like, like all right, so there's something you can consider paranormal for you. I had a dream. My dog lived. I mean, this is one was one of my best friends. It was a small Maltese, but had the same style of hair that that your dog just had. Yeah, yeah, and um, had even like with the little like brown and the beard a little bit too. Um, I had two dogs kind of like that, but one was named Zoe, and I got her when I was two and a half. This dog used to grab me when I was a little kid by the diapers. We got it for my grandmom in Florida because my grandpa had passed away. So my mom was like, let's get her a dog um, so it would help her move on. So we got her a dog, and I was playing with the dog so much. It was a little puppy, and I was running around as a toddler, maybe three or two years old or something, would grab me by my diaper and drag me around the house while I was running around. She would just drag me and I would be like, and I, I just couldn't handle it. She was just enough to tug me across. She used to run under tables with me. My head would slam up against the seats. I would crack furniture with my skull. Um, and it, yeah, I got, I'm hard headed. Uh, if, yeah, if you haven't noticed, but. Um, oh, I can hear that. Like a coconut. Yeah, a little bit like so. And uh, when, what was weird was when. Uh, we left uh, Florida, headed back home. My grandmom called not even an hour away from Florida, and we're about 12 hours away from home. So it was a long drive for us. Um, and uh, she called and said, I need you to get this dog out of here. And apparently we go up there, and there's blue ink all over my grandmom's carpets, all over the house. The dog had grabbed a pen, busted it in her mouth, and ran around the house with it. So we have this white dog covered in blue ink, and her carpets covered in blue ink as well. So Zoe became a member of our family that day. 17 years later, she passed away. She lived to be 17 and a half years old. Wow. Um, so this was, this was maybe last year um, was when this happened to me. She had died a few years before. And I got a dream that was so real and so intense of her that I literally woke up to tears and I was like, holy shit. And like, there's been few times in my family, like my family members have talked about sleeping and dreaming of a loved one that they have lost. And it's been so real. They're sitting there crying in tears because it felt so real. And that, whether that was their brain imagining it to them, conjuring it up in such a realistic form, or was it maybe a contact from the other side? I don't know, but I know one thing, if that was my dog contacting me from the other side, she should have explained why the hell she took so many shits in the house because I was tired of picking that thing up. That's the information I wanted to know, not her just giving me five minutes to play with her. But it was interesting because people always hear about these types of paranormal experiences that they talk about, like seeing a loved one in their dreams. And I look at ghosts as, are they a memory of the person that's staying here left on this earth? Or are they an energy that hasn't moved on yet? I've had some paranormal experiences when it comes to ghosts. Um, I used to, my mom used to work in a haunted hotel. I've said the story a couple of times and I'll, I'll send you a DM of what those episodes were. And you can hear, the Please story. Do. you can hear the story from it, but, um, you know, I've had multiple occurrences too. And I've also, people always talk about, um, psychic abilities and things. And, um, my family's known to have that on my mom's side. I'm not saying I'm a believer in it, but I've been able to do some shit. I have not been able to explain. Um, I used to, as a little kid, get a lot of deja vu. Uh, especially like around six, seven months ago, um, a guy in our town went missing and I had a dream. I didn't know who this guy was. I had a dream of a person lying in a ditch in like a little bit of a channel or like a gutter kind of, and I ran downstairs and I was like, Whew. like, it's one of those ones where you're like, damn, like I need to walk this, this, this one off. This isn't, isn't just wake up and go back to sleep moment. This is, I need to go and get my day started. So I'm having breakfast and my mom goes, so how was your day? And I was like, just had this crazy dream, you know, moving on kind of type thing. I was like, just getting, out, getting over that. I'm a little bit shook. And she's like, what was it about? And I was like, was, there was this, and I explained a little bit of it. And she goes, stop right there. She goes, do me a favor. Look at this photo and shows me a photo on her phone. And it's the guy from my dream. She no. Goes, and she goes, hold on. She goes, is this him? And I said, yes. And she goes, where exactly did you see him? Yeah. And I said, and I kind of described the area. A couple of days later, they found the guy in the area I described. I don't know what that was. I don't really believe it. My mom's a huge believer in that. She always talks about how my grandma can see ghosts. My grandma doesn't like to talk about it either. Um, it skipped my brother. It went to me. Uh, my mom, a long time ago, there was a show called Ghost Whisperer. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes. The guy my that, crush. Yeah. The, the guy that wrote that show, my mom met. And my, when I was about two or three years old, my mom walked up to that guy because my mom doing radio gets a lot of interviews went up to him and said i've read your book all about psychic abilities i have this son and the guy stopped my mom and said is your son's name robbie 
No. My mom has never met this guy before. This is her kind of yeah. hero, the perfect show. And my yeah. mom said yes. And the guy said he's going to be a powerful psychic one day. And my mom has held that with her for my whole entire length of my life to, you know, hinting at things. Do you know this? Do you notice this? Like always testing me and me always kind of proving I was right or something. And I never been able to explain. I didn't really, I still don't truly understand it, but I, she used to tell me all these stories about me going up to her and telling stuff like, and I was, I'd see ghosts as a kid or something. And she'd be like, there's no one else working here that would be described like that. So you saw a ghost and I just be like, okay, whatever. Maybe let me get a peanut butter sandwich or something. And, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'll definitely DM you those episodes where I explain a little bit more in detail, but like my, uh, mom, I, I never truly kind of believed I had it, but I always, I believed it was real at one point. I always like to be open-minded on these types of things, whether it's conspiracy theories, whatever. And, um, there was a girl, little girl when I was probably about 14, 13, maybe years old. And a little girl went missing. Um, she had been gone from her family for probably four or five days. Uh, it was this young girl, probably a little bit younger than I was at the time. And my, I remember my mom freaking out on my dad. And saying, I need you to call this in. You need to listen to me. Call this in. This is where this is where she is. This is where she is. This is where she is. And my dad's like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not doing that. You know how nuts I'm going to sound if I call the police telling them that oh, you saw a dream of the girl and the girl was in this location. My mom's like, if you don't do it, I'm going to. The woman, the, the daughter, the whoever, the mom needs to find her daughter. And the daughter told me where she is at. And my dad's like, all right, if it gets you to stop, okay, I'll do it. They did it. They found the body of this little girl. My mom had said that the girl came to her in a dream and talked to her that way. And my whole mom's side of the family has been known to do that. Uh, my uncle Lenny, or I think his name's Lenny burned down in a barn. Um, and she would always talk about like, he had a, my uncle Lenny was my mom's uncle. So it was my mom's dad is the one that died that we ended up getting a dog for. He would always talk about seeing his, his brother, you know, his brother that burned down in a barn fire. He talked about his whole life would see his brother. I never met, my grandpa, um, you know, at least enough to where I could remember him as, uh, he died when I was like two or three, when we got the dog, um, he fell off a ladder and, uh, broke both of his legs and they put, um, this is back before they had like, uh, what, what was that tetanus? I think it is, um, back before we had like that all solved and everything, they put metal things in his legs and he got poison from that. And um, so he ended up dying in the hospital from that. But like he would always talk about seeing his, uh, you know, his um, sibling that had burned down in a barn or something. And my grandma would always talk about seeing the paranormal have all these kind of like, she never really talked about it, but you could always kind of tell she had seen some things like that. So she was a big believer in that. And um, just these occurrences and really what this whole point kind of means is even for people that aren't really like a hundred percent of belief, like, Oh, I got abducted by aliens and they probed my ass. I'm not that type of guy, <laughs> Yeah, but to think that that's the end all be all to what the world is. I believe there's a lot more to the world than we understand truly. And to think that our president in America, Ronald Reagan developed a, basically a project program that still run today known as the center for existential risk. That is to pay attention to aliens, all these types of things that's still going. I just saying, if he comes out in a presidential speech and said that I don't think we're alone out here in this universe, and I think we should be ready if anything does come, that's a kind of paraphrase of what he did actually say. All I'm saying is, let's be aware that there is a possibility of these things out there that people are so in tune to, like, nope, 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 nope. And I get it. seeing is believing, but also having that belief is um, a little bit about what makes life a little bit interesting, too. You don't want to think it's so bland. Well, you know, Robbie, I, you know, I've always said, and, and especially because my audience is 96% America, I found just from having an interest in creating a show, the, the, the link, understandably, between paranormal and religion and uh, believing in something we, 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 we can't actually see um, and, and a confessional people. And thank you for sharing your amazing stories. This is why I created my show because all, all of all of the shows doing what I do, it was just you know bring anybody on or an author, just roll anybody in. And um, my uh, almost twenty-one year old daughter uh, is doing um, psychology at university and and now wants to go and do parapsychology, which is for a masters. 
and 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 you know again it's not a big thing here but um there's the, the i think there's basically two courses in the united kingdom sounds like i want to talk to your daughter i went to school for chemical dependency and switched to psychology well you know th- this is what i find about paranormal when you, when you when you move out the people that obviously come to the genre the the science if we may because they they need something we 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 find people like you that, that that have one or two stories. The the story I was telling recently, you know, about the anyway. So the the, the dog died, and and she was in her home office, and um, the day after the dog died, she was feeling very upset, and she heard downstairs on the wooden floors the sound of dog claws, you know, walking, and and you know, people that aren't into the paranormal have no interest why i created my show scared is going well, what's that well the dog's dead so what's that have i left a window open dude i don't want to cut you off but you just reminded me of a story there you go off you Damn. go so Tell me. at my grandparents house they had um they used to breed dalmatians so we had about 14 or 15 giant dalmatians um wow. by the time i went over there i wasn't allowed to go over there until i was like 14 or 15 years old or maybe 13 um it, we only had two left. One was lucky and one was trouble. They're both brothers. Um, every time they would Great walk names. by each other and they would growl at each other pretty aggressive. These are giant Dalmatians. Well, if they got too close to each other, sometimes they would just fight and there would be blood all over the house. There would be these intense things. Well, one day we had to put Lucky down, which didn't make any sense, only because Lucky was the calm, shy one. Trouble was the big, badass, younger, or I guess oldest brother. Um, and he was my favorite. My brother's favorite was Lucky. So my brother was really upset when this happened. Trouble, I think the only reason they kept him was because we, my grandparents lived next to kind of out in the ghetto countryside. A lot of, um, you know, African-American people that are out there. Um, and there's one guy that doesn't care, doesn't feed his dogs, but has like 12 German shepherds on his land. And they Whoa. would come into our property and they would sc- snarl at us, growl at us, and they would chase after us. Like my grandma would be out there. She doesn't have a dryer. She'd be putting her clothes on the clothesline. And these things would just come up to her. Well, trouble was, even in this old age, was these, these German shepherds' worst nightmare. My uh, trouble would go outside, walk up to these things, and they would haul ass because trouble is just bigger and tougher. Even when trouble turned 14, 15 years old, which is pretty old for a large dog. I remember being yeah, on top yeah. of a giant wood pile, and there's these freaking German shepherds at the bottom snarling at me. And I'm all the way climbed up on this giant thing, probably up to two stories worth of just lumber wood that's just dumped there. And because um, my grandparents had a wood furnace, you had to carry it all over and stuff. And I'm sitting on top of this thing screaming, help, help. And um, Trouble just, even with arthritis in the back of his hips, can barely walk. He's just stumbling out in the yard, kind of going sideways a little bit. And, and these German shepherds, even though they're like five or six, look over and see him. And tail between the legs, booked haul ass. I'm like, they could easily <laughs> wow. take him out. They could easily. But he just had that. He had been there for so long. He was seen as a dominant force. And, um, you know, he would always scratch at my grandparents' door always scratch and their door was white and then by the time it was just you could see the wood you could see the scratches all down the side of it, just all the years of dalmatians on it taking damage to it trouble ended up sleeping in my bed the last couple of years of his life um that means i would sleep with my legs cross-legged like an in indian style um uh, while laying down which is not very comfortable way to sleep but i would let him because he would stretch out and then when he would even try and get off the bed, sometimes his legs would just go straight and he couldn't bend them and he would just fall off the bed. It was very sad. And I would have to pick him up. And, you know, it's, it was difficult times too, especially when you had to go to the bathroom, he would just go when it's like, all right, but you know, you care for something so much. Yeah, and I remember yeah. when he died, it was a big thing. First of all, my legs could finally stretch out when I slept. <laughs> yeah. Second, it was a very traumatic thing. Um, I was very, very upset. I remember crying a little bit too. And I remember taking pictures of the door because my grandparents were going to paint it. Now they didn't have any dogs left because it was just time to, and I was like, you want to keep those memories there or at least take a picture. And I took a picture and um, my grandparents ended up painting the door part of it, not all of it. And I swear to God, the next day it looked like the paint had been scratched off. And I said, that's nuts. We don't, we have, a, we have another dog, but this dog is a lab and sleeps in a cage and doesn't do anything like these Dalmatians do, complete opposite. There's no way. And my grandma was like, 
hmm, maybe the page just ran off. I was like, no, there's no way. That was scratched off again. I could hear it in the middle of the night when I'm crying. I can hear like the, you know, the rubbing of something like, like that kind of scratching noise. I'm like, holy crap, like that's something. You know what I mean? And actually, I want to do a really good sound effect here. Hold on. You hear that? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And it was like Imagined that. Imagined it. Yeah. But like longer yeah. claws too. And I was like, man, like that's just nuts to me. It felt so weird too. And like, you know, people tell like, I've, I've had times when I was like in moments in my life where I'm just sitting there and it feels like somebody's watching you and you're like, what the fuck? like there'll be times like, you know, when you get in a scary movie, you end up turning around, like there's a wall behind me. Why am I turning around? But it's still like, there's feels like a presence you sense it, there. Right. Yeah. You sense it. Yeah. I yeah. think that all that's real. And that's what gets me fascinated when I have someone like you that has a podcast or is interested in these types of things. Cause it feels like we all like to hear about it. No one wants to ever talk about it. Because you seem like a nut job if you do. I understand that. And this is why, and again, thanks for sharing those amazing stories. This is why, certainly when I started the show, it, it, it was about that. It, you know, since then, you when you do Paranormal, and a lot of the shows, as I said, will just bring in anyone. And I will bring in people for content. You and I were, were talking before we did this interview about the interview I've done today. And you know what it's about. And it's it's maybe a far off sort of topic, um, you know, especially if she flushes and that's coming out soon. But just those stories you shared, people that my, um, I was very, very close to my grandfather. My, my father's, you know, well, I use father in the loosest terms. I, I um, as we record this, um, I lost my job uh, five weeks ago uh, on the radio. Uh, it was in Spain uh, due to um, the whole coronavirus thing and the lockdown. And, and you've got it in America. We have here in the UK. Spain locked down first with Italy, of course. So I lost my job and that was my income gone. And, um, and um, you know, I, I, my dad never talks to me or his grandchildren. And I sent a text and I went, Dad, um, I can't afford the internet this month. And of course, you know, my job is radio abroad, podcasting. You've got a 12 year old grandson who's always on Roblox or, or Fortnite. Uh, I can't afford our huge internet bill. And my, my father very kindly said, uh, well, I'll, I'll cover you this month. Get what you need. And I said, thanks, Dad. Um, and then I got an email um, yesterday from my internet provider here in the UK saying that... Um, they're going to cut me off. It could be today because uh, my father has, has now said uh, that he didn't authorize the payment. So they're going to cut me off because he paid for it. And now he's saying he didn't authorize it. So that's what I have dealt with for 48 years. The only little bit I take from this is when my grandmother died, his mother died about six, seven years ago. And he came to visit and um, then he went. And it took about two days. And, and my daughter, my 20 year old daughter came to me and went, dad, granddad had a story. And I said, okay, it's your sort of thing. And I said, well, go on. And it was one of those classic ones, Robbie, that I hear all the time. And in a nutshell, my, my grandmother, his mother, was in a nursing home. One night, my dad woke up. Uh, the, uh, the CD player was on. Um, it was playing a song. He got out of bed thinking somebody had obviously tried to burgle him. And whilst burgling him, rather than creeping around the house, they decided to put on his 1990s music centre and play the music of Nora Jones, classic smooth jazz on a piano. And uh, my dad's uh, music centre, or hi-fi, the old big hi-fis, one of the ones in the old days where you would put in like six CDs. And uh, this was CD three, track six. It was my grandmother's favorite song. I knew that, a Nora Jones song, probably about bicycles or clouds or something. Um, and he turned it off. And then within 30 seconds, the phone goes, it's the nursing home and she's died. It's one of those classic paranormal stories, but it actually happened to my dad, who's about to cut off my internet. Um, but he wouldn't tell me. 
even though I do this show. He told my daughter. And he told my daughter, don't, don't tell Philip until we've gone. Even my own dad was embarrassed to share a story about his mum, my grandmother, when I do a paranormal podcast. And, and that, again, Robbie, was, was a moment for me where, where you've just said this in, in, in what you've just said, that you know, people are afraid to, to share these things. And it might be it might be hunters in the woods. It, it might be just looking up at the sky. We we've got a thing in the UK at the moment here, where uh, you know Elon Musk is putting up his um, Skylink satellites, um, and everybody in the UK is looking up and seeing this train of satellites. But but really, it's it's the it's the deja vu as you were talking about. It it's the it, it's the preconceptions of things happening. It's the, I think often, you know, with, with, with the ghost stuff, uh, you do kind of think, well, hold on a minute, you know, we, we, we have those photos in the 19th century, you know, of a ghost or something, which, which we know now are just, you know, a double exposure or whatever, you know, somebody there with a biscuit tin, and they, it took 20 minutes to take a photo. But it is those moments, the moments you've just shared personally, even my own dad, too embarrassed to tell me that in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, his old CD player goes on, he gets the call. The one I want to just mention, and I have to mention this, is, um, and you've been sharing about your own family. And I, I, I want listeners who are not into the paranormal, don't believe in it, to think of the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze and, and of course, Demi Moore. When I, that whole story with the Nora Jones is about my grandmother dying, when her husband, when my grandfather dies, uh, as I said, I'm not close to my father as he cuts off our whatever. My grandfather was as you would want your grandfather to be, as I'm sure yours is, as, a, as I'm sure most of your listeners are, the, the mainstay, the father figure of the family, the one you go to for advice, the one that just manages to sit at a table at Christmas or Thanksgiving. And whatever they say is just magical. It, it's almost like a scriptwriter's has done it. Even if somebody brings out a turkey, they come out with that one liner. They, they could have been a comedian or a radio host. They could have worked on shipping or logging all their life. But those sort of grandfathers that just come out with that one line and you think, oh, that's genius. And... He passed away uh, 19 years ago now. Um, and I remember my grandmother taking me and the ex at the time to one side. And this is pre me doing paranormal. This is, she said, Philip, I, I've got to share something. And you were so close to your grandfather. Um, and he loved you. And I said, well, thank you very much. And he said, and my grandmother again, nothing going on in our family she said there's something weird and i said what what is it grandma and i swear to you my i'm actually well we can't see it on my crappy webcam but i'm getting goosebumps um my grandmother said to me 19 years ago she said philip it's weird but your granddad knew and i said knew what and she said philip he knew he was in bed in the afternoon and he was having a cup of tea and he'd been fine all day. And she said, Philip, he called for me. And I said, yeah. And, 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 and he just went, Edith, Edith. And I went in and he said, if you make me cry. And he said, and, and he was 82, 82. I think my grandmother was 80 at the time. And he said, can I cry or not? Is this going to ruin your show? No, do it, dude, if you want, man. He said, hold me. Man. And, and, you know, like lots of 82-year-old people, Robbie, you know, he wasn't in the best of health. 
but but he wasn't like ill and he was having one of those afternoon you know watch some daytime tv in bed and have a cup of tea and a biscuit and my grandmother said to me a year later when she came to visit me and and the family she said philip it was just i've been with your grandfather for 60 years and he just called out and he said Edith, Edith, her name. And um, she went in thinking he wanted another cup of tea or something like that. And only because, you know, he, not some sort of macho thing. He, he was a lovely man. And he said, um, just hold me. She said, what's wrong? And he said, just hold me. And there was no... There was no signs, Robbie. There was no coughing. There was no... He was just a guy watching, an 82-year-old watching TV in bed. And he called out to his wife of 60 years and said, just hold me. And he was gone. You bastard. He was gone. She said within like 10 seconds. Well, I mean, I appreciate you sharing that. And it brings up to a really weird thought I've always had is it seems like when somebody's on their last day or maybe their last time on this earth, everything seems to be going perfect. Everything seems to be fine. They seem to be nothing wrong with them. It seems like they're having the best day of their life in the last 20 years, maybe of sickness didn't even matter. Um, I chalk it up to the movie um, Ghost Rider. Don't mean to throw that crappy reference in there after your heart story, but I just want to get you pulled out of that little bit of a thing because um, I know how hard that must have been to share that, and I appreciate that. Um, but in Ghost Rider, when the devil gives him what he wants, he wants his dad to be healthy. And then at the, the dude's like, I'm as healthy as a horse, better than I felt in years. And then he gets into that burning accident. Next thing you know, he's gone. He's passed away because the devil twists your what you want around. My great grandfather, for instance, you know, 90 something years old, driving stick shift in a car, um, taking trips to Rhode Island without telling anybody and barely can hear anything. Um, the day before he died, uh, my dad called him. And this is like when you're on the phone with him, you'd have to be like, yeah. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay. G Grandpa. And you're screaming through the phone, like yelling at him. And um, he would sit there. My dad would be like, pa Papa. And he's like, why are you yelling? My dad's like, what? <laughs> yeah. He goes, why are you yelling at me? I did, did I do something wrong? My dad's yeah. like, no, you can never hear me. He's like, I can hear you just fine. What, right. what do you want from me? And my dad's just like, I don't know. And then my dad never even thought twice about it. And you wouldn't. Next, you wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. The next day he ended up dying. They ended up finding right. him later. And I'm, I'm like, he was perfectly, you could tell he was more talkative. He was more like interested. He was like how he used to be way back in the day as my dad remembered him. I only knew him in his old age, obviously, because he was like in his 80s when I was a kid. So, but I mean, it's that type of thing is like sometimes when everything's, that's why I freak out when things start going right for me. Like in one day, if I have like, I hit every green light today. What? Free gas? Huh? I won the lottery. It's like, I need to go home and lie down and not do anything. Stay away from sharp utensils, everything. Cause this is it. This is where I'm going to be yeah. taken. <clears throat> and um, it puts into a big perspective too, man. And I think everybody has these moments in their life and whether you push it down too, to make it so secret to where you never want to reveal these emotional sides of you. I, I consider you a little bit weak when you don't want to do that. I think a person is strong when they get to show an emotional side of themselves too, because it helps bring a realness into the conversation, much like you just did. It helps bring you know, let, let, to a situation. Let me join in here because, and, and, and uh, I agree with your beautiful words. I think, you know, from, from me doing this paranormal thing, there are those people that, 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 that look for it, but there's moments like you've shared, you know, I gave the analogy, um, of of that moment with my grandfather, I can't believe it made me cry, um, because because I can only understand it thinking of that Patrick Swayze moment. It's it's I like to think my grandfather saw a light and knew the the the, 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 the story you've just shared. You know, everything seemed all right, and he could hear. Now. If that is not something unexplainable, your dad didn't notice it that day because you don't, we're not used to it. Even when I pull over and I say, it could have been a Bigfoot in the UK. 
I don't sit there and think, oh, that's a Bigfoot. I better get out of here. You kind of think, oh, that's, that's fascinating. What is that? My grandmother didn't think at that moment, well, this is the final, you know, here we go. And that's what I love about it. With, with, and especially with the stories you've shared today. That, and, and I know you're thinking now, do you think, actually, I've probably got about another 30. That those moments that we don't, we don't, my, my mum used to go out and uh, used to walk every night to keep her fit. And um, she would come home with pockets full of coins, pockets full of coins that, that you know, people have just dropped. And my mum would uh, just find them. And it, it was a little joke when I was growing up as a teenager. My mum would go out every night for an hour's walk for a bit of exercise where we lived in the country and would come home, you know, with a couple of pounds, you know, a couple of dollars worth of, you know, for us pennies, for you cents, just coins that people have dropped. And I never find any. And, and I wear glasses as we're doing now. But when I go out, I don't wear glasses. So, Robbie, I always walk with my head down. You drive my ex-wife nuts. I don't really look at people. I, I look down so I don't step in anything that the grand emotions left. And um, my mum died very unexpectedly two years ago. And I got the call and um luckily i was on my own the, the my children were uh, on holiday with their mum and i dealt with it and i i went to my local shop my local store and i thought bugger it today i'm 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 going to get four cans of beer i'm just going to chill out remember me mum and i was walking back from the shop this is 2 years ago and if you got a pavement, a sidewalk, and, and you got a tape measure, and you measured, you know, from a wall to the, the roadside, and, and you got, Robbie, the, the perfect bit in the middle of that sidewalk, that pavement, there was the shiniest coin I'd ever seen. Um, a five pence for us here. A pretty small coin, but I mean, it almost hurt my eyes. It was, it was a sunny day, but it was so bright. It was like it had just been made. Or there was no doubt you couldn't miss it. I mean, somebody driving past in a car would have seen it. It was so bright with the re reflection of the sun. Now, I walk everywhere. I don't have a car. I never find coins, even though that was my mum's thing. I don't find coins. And it was 15 minutes after I found out my mum had died. I pop out, get some beer. And it's there. It's there perfectly, Robbie, in the, in the center of a sidewalk. Now, I left you a coin, Tom. Listen, a lot of people, man, would just say, oh, somebody's, of course they dropped a coin. But it, it, for me, it's it was a, that moment. It's a different intake. It's, I've had that same thing. I've been driving on the road one time after like a really hardcore, like a lot of events happening to me where like I had to pay a grand and a half to replace four tires on my car because I hit three different nails on my car all in a couple of day span. So it was all in one week. Wow. I had to keep getting tires replaced. I felt like, yeah, I was like, did I fuck you, Jesus? Like, that's what I was thinking <laughs> at one point. And um, I remember seeing a butterfly flying across like this road and this just get missed by this car. I swear to you, just get missed by this car. I was on 90 bridge. Uh, people that are in Ocean City, Maryland know it was close by secrets where my parents were. But um, I just see this butterfly um, just get missed. And I was heading into work and I was like, damn, we're all just like that butterfly, just slowly flying around, barely just getting missed by that car. It was a very spiritual moment. I'm not a spiritual guy. A minute later, I was like, it could have went the complete opposite fucking way at the butterfly when I got hit by the car. i like, well, this is life. Life sucks. This is that. I went back to normal. But it's that type of thing, whatever it means to you. I've seen people that have had kids born, never been religious, and then suddenly become religious because they felt they saw God in their kid's foot or in their kid's ear or in their kid's face. So whatever it means to you, that's why I can understand that. And where some people would listen to you, be like, you just, it's just some dude dropped the coin. No, it could, it's whatever it dude, means I, to you. Dude, I'm like you. I'm not a religious guy. So, so I always try and, and, and why now my, my daughter wants to do a master's in parapsychology to sort of keep debunking. For me, I always explain it to my, I had that coin thing, right? And, um, Never, find a, never found a coin in the last 20 years. There was that coin. Nothing happened for six months. I was walking, you know, single dad, walking my son to school. And um, we, 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 we were talking about, uh, you know, family issues, like I'm saying about my internet today. 
and, and my mum was a mum. She was a grandmother. Uh, it was all family. And, and since she died, you know, my, my father goes on cruises and bought a sports car. Um, like you do, like you do. Like you do when you're having some sort of issue. And, um, Call that an end life crisis. And, and doesn't talk to me and, uh, or his grandchildren, tries to play me off against my ex-wife. It's just a hideous thing. And like I said, um, paid my internet bill last month very kindly and, and now has said he didn't authorize it. So, you know, it could go in the middle of the school. It's, that's where I am. And I walk my son to school. I don't, my son is not involved in any of this. But he, sa- he knows it, right? He's 12, he's bright. And we're walking down our back lane I'm walking him to the school bus and I swear to you, Robbie, again, in our back lane, which is big enough for, you know, a, a garbage truck to drive down right in the middle of our back lane was, you know, what I'm going to say a coin. And of course, you know, it's just somebody coming home from the pub or work and they've dropped it, but it was right again, right in the center. And my son saw it and he went, I'm having that. And it was nothing. Robbie, it was nothing. It was a two pence, you know, three cents in America. And I said, uh, I said, well, you remember, you know, grandma used to uh, collect coins. And he looked at me and he went, I wouldn't like to be granddad when he gets to heaven. Now we're, we're not, see, now we're not a religious family. Yeah. And of course, yeah, I know it was just, you know, your butterfly, me with my coins. But then you have to step back, don't you? And, you ha- and, and your grandfather, who could now hear, you, you have to step back and you have to think, well, actually, if I've never seen a coin, that was my mum's thing. If it had been a playing card or a bit of chewing gum or dog poo, um, it wouldn't mean a thing, but it was something. And then what it meant to you it's like we're saying but you've heard it as well and uh, there's this thing with the paranormal they call it paradelphia you know where, where people just try and read things into things without trying to debunk it themselves seeing signs and things that aren't seeing signs yeah but then there are those moments there are those moments and for everybody listening now i'll say to you you've had something in your life you can't explain. And not because you needed it, not because maybe there was a death in the family. There's been something that, that as you said, that you feel somebody's watching you. We've all had deja vu. It might just be once in your life. There might have been somebody at the corner of your eye. I, I had a thing, um, again, about a year ago, where I'd had a row with my, I don't row, but I'd had a disagreement with my daughter. There was no, it wasn't a row, but it was, I can't even remember what it was about. I think it was probably, she wanted full fat Coke and I wanted to give a diet, just something not important at all. And at one in the morning, our telly came on in another room, but at a volume that was so offensively loud. And I thought she got up and, and was watching TV in the middle of the night. Um, so I got out of bed and I walked in the room, which was closed. And, and, and of course, um, you know, there was nobody in there. She was fast asleep. There were no pets. I can't explain that. Now I've had that television for 10 years. I still use it now. That's happened once, but it happened on that particular day where I try and get on with everyone. My, my kids, you know, if, if I tell my son off and I say, just something awful like, do you think you've had enough Coke tonight? That's as angry as I can get. I can't do it anymore. I probably soil my pants. But on this weird day, there's the telly on. Now, people are going to debunk that. People said to me, Robbie, oh, well, well, you have lots of pets. Somebody stood on it. No, they're all in the bedroom with me. Well, obviously, it's a dodgy telly. No, I've had it 10 years. Never happened since. What course people are always going to make excuses, you know, doing your paranormal podcast, people are going to make excuses of why something happens because some people just don't want to believe and some people refuse to. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean, if anybody listening 
understands anything or maybe have had a weird incident in your life, which I guarantee you you probably have had, you can't isolate that as being just a coincidence. You have to look at all the other types of factors, but it's mostly about seeing the other person's perspective too. me listening to you telling your tales and you listening to me telling my accountations of things. It's not about believing and being hundred percent who's right, who's right, who's this. It's more about understanding the other person's perspective and understanding what the person has thought of. Maybe make your own rational reasons as to why, if you want to do that, but also understanding maybe that could be something. I mean, anybody out here that's listening to this podcast, look up, obviously, um, Phillips podcast and everything too. I'll make sure everything's linked in the description and stuff, but it's true. I mean, there is stuff out there that's entertaining to listen to. And a lot of times the thing that's entertaining are the things that we want to believe, which are there, but we refuse to believe them because it just doesn't seem like we can possibly conjure that up into our heads. Yeah. And I think the thing is, it's about people not, realizing what they've seen like your dad that moment with your story people that that will look up you know they'll be out with the dogs or the kids and they'll look up and they'll see something i do it we look up we we see something and i go what's that and my son goes oh it's a plane but we, we look a bit UFO, that's what it is. right we look a bit closer and i'll go well well you know um and we're on a flight path where we are well, the planes have, you know, the red and green port and starboard lights. Now, my son, Robbie, I'm so proud of him. He's 13 in September. So he's got himself an app on his iPhone, which, uh, you know, the ones you can see the planes on? Yeah. And he's got one of those. So when we take the dogs out in the evening, we'll take the uh, paranormal puppy out. And I go, and I'm being serious here. And I go, what's that up there? That's Venus, Dad. That one, that's the plow. Well, that one's moving. International Space Station? I don't think so. Satellite. But, na but now, oh, yeah, one of Elon's uh, satellites. But now, of course, you know, what I love is, you know, my adorable son gets out the app and he goes, no, it is a plane, Dad. I think it's just a bit cloudy. But, but to, to bring in people like that, you know, to, to get them to look, to notice, to not walk with your head down. And I think, you know, Robbie, when, when people start thinking about what they might have seen, when they start thinking about what they might have seen in the sky or that thing out the corner of their eye, to open people's minds to that, hopefully then opens also their minds to other things like walking to work and the homeless guy that you that you ignore you you close it off hopefully opening people's minds to that that, that there could be something else would also and I'm very passionate about this after you know being homeless living in the YMCA hopefully it opens their eyes also to the person they walk past every day and think oh, I'll, I'll I'll throw in a dollar tomorrow Everyone's got a story, man. You literally are speaking my lingo here. It's, uh, we'll be open-minded. Well, listen, this is what you do on your podcast. You, you get people on, you know, who could be podcasters, chefs, serial killers. I mean, who knows? And you have to sit there and be open-minded. I mean, I just some people think... that, you know, they do hint off at serial killer. I'm still, you know, still a little bit iffy about you on some of these things you're talking about here. Luckily, man, luckily we have um, what you Americans call the pond. And Take and, them down by the river. And if you invited me to Maryland, which for me is only the, the bit where Meg Ryan goes in Sleepless in Seattle, I'd end up in San Francisco. I wouldn't even know. Tossing out Meg Ryan. Man. You Happy are days. old, man. You are fucking old. Well, I am. I'm 48. Now, I listen. I, I, I know. I know. It, it, it was my birthday last week, and, and uh, I know for your YouTube viewers, they'll be going, did you say 68? Hey, man, it's what happens when you have no hair. For actually, that's why the stories took so long of pauses. Holy crap. We've been rolling for almost two hours here, homie. Hey man, you you got to get your money's worth, and and I do. You I might... paid a freaking nickel and got a dime bag out of it. I like it. It is, it is. But at least you matched me on Tinder. Um, 
have you got anything there under your under your cap? Because you're like you're 22. It's oh wow. Sorry for your listening audio, but oh yeah. Our barber shops are closed, so I'm a little bit in an angry uh, tizzy. When I get actually out of this podcast, I'm headed to my buddy's house to go get my head shaved. So pretty stoked on that one because it's too much. When I start wearing hats is when people start going, why are you wearing a hat? Why are you wearing a hat? It's like 90 yeah. degrees out. I'm like, because the hair is too damn long. I don't feel like coming. No, you've, you've, you've got more hair than my uh, bearded collie. It says it's an impressive thing. Cut it yourself over the bath. Get some clippers. I don't have any clippers. Kitchen scissors? I've tried that. I stopped halfway. And then I actually did that one time. I shaved my own head when I was like 17 years old. And I stopped halfway. I got bored. And I just left it. And my mom came home and was like, what the fuck? She was like, you got to get that. Let me fix it. And then she fixed it. And she was like, where did you put your hair at? The other half. I'm like, I just put it outside. It stayed there for a good winter. It just stayed there. It didn't go anywhere. It just didn't move. The wind just... It's a nice nest for uh, some of the birds nearby. Yeah, it was pretty, my hair is not the best, but it was there. I mean, it looked like the way, moss, the, but hey. The weird thing is, and I won't ask about, about your parents because it's personal, but when you, for your middle-aged male, male listeners, when you get to that stage where you're losing your hair and you think actually paying somebody $10 for a haircut, $20 for a haircut isn't worth it, and you start doing your own, and then, and then you, you need some like sexy music because when you clip in your own hair. I don't want to know this side of you. And, and no, no, listen, and you, you start, you have to like feel over your scalp, right, Robbie, to find if you've got a chunk left. And you're like, oh, I need some Barry White music on. Oh, and, uh, and you suddenly find out who you are. This is getting real dark. This is not the paranormal side I wanted to see of Mr. Philip. But I, I guess that's what you get what you paid for when the CD says paranormal porn. But I mean. This is interesting. I like it. But Philip, I, I got I to gotta wrap it up here, dude. We've been talking for a while, and sadly, Spotify doesn't take things over two hours. So I want you to be able to plug your show here, my man. I want you to shout that podcast out. Plug it one more time for us so I can make sure I link it up in the description. Wonderful. Thanks so much, man. Honor to be honored. Uh, I never get honored. And to be honored, to be honored, to be honored is wonderful. Uh, the Paranormal Show is called Scared. Uh, just put a question mark on the end. You will find it. The crime show is called Worst Crimes Ever. And since we're here, a uh, new show coming out next week with my 12-year-old son. English guy, English boy. We're talking facts. We have a giggle. It's called The Fact Off. And uh, that, that's a family audience for you. And, uh, well, it's me and my boy. So uh, thanks, older my man. man. Older boy. That sounds like a show in America where someone gets kidnapped. But sounds like yours is a little bit more entertaining. I like that. Well, that's me and my son, so don't twist it, you you awful person. <laughs> well, that, thank you. So- dang, I mean, suck it. I mean, I'm just... Uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode out of the Blank Podcast, and stay tuned for our next episode.